This is the Blaring Out with Eric Blair show, and today I'm here with Jay and Davi of Blood on the Dance Floor. How you guys doing today? Uh, <laughs> we're doing uh, awesome. Today's amazing. How did you guys get it together, and what was your original inspiration? Hmm, sex probably would be the original inspiration. No. <laughs> I mean, you know, like, our music is about making babies, but th there's other meanings to it. I, the preparation for this tour was like transcending from electronic band to a live band. Mm. Because um, warp tour to me like outdoor festivals need to be like live band and, and that's not, a recent thing though Not like a laptop kind think, of a thing. I think he's talking about how the band like started. Oh, how did we start it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely definitely we started with the message of love <laughs> which Can transcend into sex uh, feelings any any sort of feelings, but love is a pretty universal feeling for everyone Do you feel that there was? That you were at war to make this happen, to make Blood on the Dance Floor happen? I mean, did, was, was there things that you had to fight against that were suppressing you doing this? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> what were they? <laughs> um, oh, geez, there's all kinds of petitions, like with moms trying to get us kicked off Warp Tour. They just don't like us because, like, you know, the music was explicit well, and stuff. Different. Well, I mean, like, I mean, we've you know, changed since then, but... you know, and like they've gotten like the they've gotten a bad perception of us in their head because of the stuff they read on the internet. It's just not true. You know, you can't believe everything you read on the internet because that was true. I mean, none of us would be living right now, right? Well, what are some of the rumors that that got blown out of proportion? Uh, I think I, th I think basically it was just like rumors that were blown out of blown out of proportion with the uh, the whole like uh, you know me having sex with underage fans and uh, Jay having sex with underage fans. And the thing is, like, we live for our fans and we would die for our fans. And the fact that there was accusations made against that is just it's just disgusting. Like. I cannot find it in my heart to, that people would actually be that it's low. It's like a mother getting accused ruthless. of molesting her child. You know, it's just it's like just, I was like, "You're such a idiot." These kids, these kids are everything to us, and and you know, I was, you know, a 15 year old kid like that, and the, to be accused of something like that was just like, you know, just what the hell, man? Like, what, what's your problem? You know what I mean? Like, are you that jealous? Why like, you got hate? Why you got? Why you got? Who's <laughs> gonna hate? But I mean, you know, whatever. We we take a negative situation, we turn it positive. So who like so Warp Tour had your back essentially? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Totally. Yeah, Kevin Kevin Lyman um actually like stood up for us and he even he he did like if it wasn't for him, like him, you know, having our backs and stuff like that, I don't know what I'd do, but he really he took us in, in his arms and, and made us part of the family and that's a huge honor. Like that's the greatest honor I we I've ever had in my life. Now and now at what point did you feel like you guys you guys got past that and, and overcame it? The f first day that we walked off our bus to go to Warp Tour and like every person we passed was like hey what's up or like they'd stop and be like oh, I love your band and like people you never expect like the drummer from Winds of Plague like they're like super hard yeah, and they're like the oh, other night we band. just partied with the we came as Romans like we were just like just getting hammered and, and just reflecting on memories and life and you know it's just cool like this tour is about diversity and unity and coming together and all the bands get it and it's just it's 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 a dream come true like I said earlier it's like a big like melting pot is. of love. Yeah. What have been some of the most exciting fan moments for you? Hmm. What exciting I, I think, fan I think moments? The one, the one fan moment I remember yesterday was this girl. She had her arms all cut up, and she come up. She comes up to me. She's like, "Your music saved my life." Like I, I knew what direction I was going towards, and and when I, you know, I heard your voice, and and. and you know, like just hearing that, like I literally, I had a tear eye, and I just gave her the biggest hug, and I gave her some free merch, and I told her I was like, never lose faith in yourself, and and that just, that's that j it was a reminder of what I do and, and why I'm here. Like, you know, we are superheroes, and with great power comes great responsibility. What do you feel it is about your music that gives people hope and and prevents them from wanting to slit their wrists? If you give something people can relate to, of course, it's going to make them feel more secure and gives them something to look at, you know, and be like, oh, I'm not the only person, you know? It's truly about the, the meaning inside the song. Like, even though Bewitch is about heartbreak, the song does remind you that you are the power, you are the magic, you control your destiny. And if you don't, ha if you don't believe in yourself, who's gonna believe in you? How do you come up with the lyrics? And do you guys collaborate on the lyrics? Yeah, absolutely. It's a 50-50. We, we basically will have a, a concept, you know, one of us will be like, hey, let's do this concept, let's do that. And it, like this, the last album we did was All the Rage. It was different. Uh, the, it was uh, it was one. It was our first concept album, but every song represented a different rage. Whether it's uh, finding yourself through life, or trying to understand your dreams to live a better life. Uh, you know, 
definitely we we wanted to write a, an album with people losing their jobs and things like that to give them hope because hope is the greatest gift you can give to a friend and that's that's we want to give hope because i think if you know what if they're losing their jobs and stuff like that let's give them strength to work harder to make new discoveries to advance in their lives to get what they want and that's what makes us happy is seeing all these other people happy you know that's what motivates motivates us to continue doing what we do Jay, tell me about the live show. This first festival I've ever played, and this first festival you ever played. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think it's a riot. Yeah, it. it's like total chaos. I love it. You know, you walk out on that stage, and you just see all those faces, and they're just so. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, let's we're rage. Like, Fuck, yeah. <laughs> we're all like, ah, and we rage back, and we're, we're like jumping <laughs> over, and like today, I like jumped in the field, and I like look back up, and the things like all the way up there, I'm like. Like, how am I gonna get back up there? It's just, it's cool. Like, seeing their faces light up, it just makes, it amps us up even more. It makes us go crazier. How many dates are you guys doing on Warp? The whole thing. The whole thing. The whole thing. And then what stage are you guys playing? Skull, Skull Candy. Candy. Skull Candy. Now, tell me, is that one of the huge stages, or is that like it's one? Middle. It's the middle. middle. It's, it's like purgatory. <laughs> 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 no, but it, it's, it's, a, it's, like I said, we're, we're playing with a lot of great artists like MC Lars and Big Chocolate. And, uh, you know, we got love for all the bands, like everybody. It's, it's just, you know, it's, like I said, it's a pleasure to work with all those guys. They're all great. So who are some of your favorite sex symbols since you guys are, you know, rocking the sexy thing? Hmm, my favorite sex symbol, um, I'd probably say Angelina Jolie. She's, she's the ultimate sex symbol. Like, there's no one higher than that. It's a girl. <laughs> well, since, since you are a, a licensed cosmetologist, what would you pick out as far as what? Do you, what is the first thing you think of as far as her facial features oh, that really gets you? Androgyny, androgyny all the really? way. She's extremely like, she has the masculine jawline, but she has the really like feminine, like the big lips uh -huh. and the really big beautiful eyes. It's just it's and her little nose. She's just so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and then Jay, when you're not dreaming about her, who would who would be the next in line? Well, besides me, um, <laughs> go for it. <laughs> um, hmm, I don't know. Who's a who's a really good guy? Is a sex I, symbol. I, I I look at Marilyn Manson. Marilyn Manson is a sex symbol. I I do. Yeah. I look him. Anyway, he's he's a he's a dark dude that probably gets laid a lot. Yeah. True. Yeah. His, okay. His, his lyrics, his words, his style. I mean, his swagger is sexy. I was thinking Little Wayne. <laughs> Little Wayne, Wayne. I can see that. Can he's see that. he's pretty sexy. <laughs> when I, think about I mean, a lot of times power can make people very sexy. Absolutely. Yeah. And he's got a lot of power in the music industry right now. Every show he per he performs is like his last show, and that, oh, that's yeah. what makes it amazing. I mean, he just gives it his all. Davi. Ah man, I like Megan totally. Fox, man. She's oh. a fox. But see, I don't know. I, <laughs> she she seems a little stuck up. I'm not sure. I don't, not anymore now, not after she got humbled. You know, you heard oh, yeah, the yeah. Spielberg. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> she needed she, that. <laughs> you know what? It's cool. I'll hire her. She just has to go through an interview. On the Warp Tour, though, you're seeing like a million Megan Foxes. Where? Dude, there's like Megan Foxes all over this place. What? Where? You guys, you've been so busy that you missed it, but there's, it's all over this place. I've seen some hot bitches, but I ain't seen no damn Megan Fox walking around. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. Honestly, I've just been so caught up just trying to make our fans happy that I just, you know, if if, if after everything's done, there's a hot lady here, I'll, you know, I'll pull up my camera, we'll go milf hunters, but, you know, other than that, <laughs> you know. It where, is. where do you guys stand on spirituality? Um... <laughs> Um, I'm a definitely kind of a, a little bit of a be believer. I think people should believe in themselves. I don't. I don't get not not say that I like need people to believe in that, but that's what I believe in. I just believe in myself because it's what you have. Uh, Catholicism. That's pretty. I, I grew up as a Catholic. <laughs> you're, you're Catholic. Yeah. yeah. You I, have the beads. The rosaries. Oh, yeah, I have a rosary here. He, he wears rosary every day. Every day I wear a rosary. Cool. And uh, it's it's uh, my mom gave it to me. It's bathed in holy water. She she gave it to me to look over at me. So, and so your parents are very supportive of you guys of what you guys are doing right now. Yeah. Oh hell yeah, <laughs> like definitely. They, they're just you know like I said, my mom told me the other day she's like I'm so proud of you, everything you've done, and and she sees that, wow. you know we're trying to make a difference for these kids and, you know we're out here for them and, and just you know trying to give them happiness and stuff like that. So they support that, and that's what that's what really you know, yeah I mean really to counts. me that is like. The sign of true success, because I think don't you don't you want your parents' approval? Is that important to you? How important is that? 
Um, I think growing up it was like more important than like anything, but like, I don't know, as I got older, my mom doesn't even like, it's not even like a parent to me anymore. My mom's like my sister, really? you know, kind of, yeah. Cause my mom's so chill. <laughs> she's like, oh, let's go get tattooed together. She has like a portrait of me like on her back now. Yeah, no, she's super proud mama. <laughs> That's great. Where totally. do you guys, where do you guys see yourself in five years? Uh, bigger and better things for sure. I, you know, like everything, like I said, it's been a blessing and fortunate and we're going to continue to keep working hard. So wherever, you know, that dedication leads us, we'll be there with open arms. And now, I, I, I mean, you're just, your image is very theatrical. So what would be your ultimate like stage show for you guys where you had total artistic oh, control? Uh, See, I knew this would be great. Be like an outer space like, or something like, ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're talking about like Star Wars, but like glow in the dark. I mean, just, the whole thing is like just to take you out of reality into a whole new world and, and we want to make that come to life. It's kind of like, uh, you know, uh, Disney World, you know, like you go there and it's it's a whole new world. We want people to go to our shows and, and you know, understand like the atmosphere. It's not just, you know, us on a stage. It's like it's like bringing them to us, you know, have you guys done the European thing yet? Like any festivals? Not yet. We've been really focusing on the American market, but um, this year we are planning to invade uh, the UK and Australia and head out there. You know that when you guys, when you go to Europe, man, you guys are going to be huge. I mean, you play festivals out there, it's like, it's going to be like life changing. <laughs> oh. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're excited. We there's want. a hunger. I mean, there, there's like, you guys are like custom made for that market, yeah. you know. And we've never been there either, and we have so many fans there that we've really? never met or anything. And it's and just it's, like it's always heartbreaking to see their tweets. Where we're like, "Come to the UK," and we're like, "We want to come." And you know, it's all about the, our finances right now. But we we will plan on, and you know, when things get better, uh, we will definitely make a trip there. We're just trying to find a booking agent out there right now. Yeah, one of the things you guys mentioned was Marilyn Manson. Yeah, Mechanical Animals is my favorite album. Yeah, that is, that's a bomb album. That's when he was going out with Rose McGowan. And I think there's a song on there actually about Rose. I always thought it was about Rose. But yeah, we user were, friendly? We, we, were, <laughs> we, were, we were suspicious of that, too. We, were, we talked about that. We we're like, there's got to be a song on there about Rose. Yeah, right. But I liked Golden Age cool. Grotesque, though. Golden Age Grotesque was sick. And it's, it's amazing. I still it, listen to it. You guys will probably have your own film someday, too. And your own cartoon. I mean, branding is, I mean, you guys are, all, I mean, you can totally be branded. It's, it's, it, it's because your characters, people love characters. They love, they can wear it on their shirt. They can like wear a bracelet with pictures of you guys. So you're like perfect. Cause you're like these characters in a comic book. Do you see yourselves like that? No, we're totally anime characters. Yeah, yeah. We, we see we, it all we really, the time. We're like, oh. I think a lot of fans really like all their drawings and, and they have little anime characters of us. So we're always like, you know, we just look at ourselves as these characters now and it's, it's, I mean, I don't know. We're very flattered. Please keep blaring out on the Eric Blair Show. We are Blood on Dance Floor. We stand for unity and quality. One love. Blaring out with Eric Blair with Blood on the Dance Floor. Signing off. Ugh. The Blaring Out Show.